everyone, OpenAI recently released their function calling API. So I thought it'd be fun to go over with you guys what this function API offers and uh, how we can use it ourselves in Python. Uh, so with this update, they increased the context length of the model, meaning we can pass more tokens in our chat. There have also been some cost reductions and some models have been deprecated. And for the function calling update, there are now two models uh, which have been aligned just like the chat model to chat. These have been aligned or trained in order to respond well to picking functions specified in a specific format. And to show you what we can do with this function calling API, I made some example code in Python uh, to make it more clear. Uh, so what the function calling API allows us to do, like before, we create a messages object and this messages object contains our chat history and the prompt. And in our case, it's, it's just a simple prompt, namely calculate the sum of the numbers one, two, and three. And then with this function calling API, what we can do is we can provide a list of function descriptions. So this is a single function description, which is the name of the function, which would be sum. You can see this is not a function that has to exist anywhere, but it's namely a function that ChatGPT thinks it can access. Um, so you should imagine it as we ask this question and ChatGPT is able to determine that to answer this question, it would be useful to use this sum function somewhere else. Uh, and it's able to determine that it wants to use this sum function by giving a good description of what the function does. So we say simply calculates the sum of a list of numbers, right? And this is very closely related to what we want the answer to our prompt to be. Uh, we also need to describe the arguments that the function receives because when ChatGPT says, hey, I want to use the sum function, It'll say, hey, use the sum function and use it given these arguments. So what we'd expect is we'd want ChatGPT to format this into some sort of list with like square brackets, one comma two comma three. And then that would be something we could pass to the actual sum function that would exist somewhere. Uh, so to describe the arguments, we first say that all the arguments given, like the group of arguments that it could give is a JSON object and the properties, so the actual functions or the keyword arguments uh, would be numbers. So the sum function only receives one argument, which we call numbers, which is a list of numbers, right? And we describe that it is a list or an array by saying that its type is an array. And these words are predetermined and can be found in the documentation, which is over here. And I believe if I go back, yeah, so here you have like the object type, these array types, Boolean types. So these are all the types you can pass in order to basically enforce that ChatGPT responds in this format with this type. So we say that the numbers is an array and we say that the type, or, and we say that the items inside the array have a type of number. And number is once again, a predefined keyword to ensure numbers. Uh, and then we need to pass a description for that specific argument. So this is a list of numbers for which the sum is calculated, right? So it's a description of this. And finally, we can also set a required, uh, we can pass a list of required arguments. So since um, in order to call sum, the list of numbers to calculate the sum on is required, we pass a list that contains the name of this argument, which is numbers. All right, and then we can start basically using it as we're used to. So. And just like you saw in the documentation or just like you saw in the announcement over here um there is this these two models that are especially created for this right so this gpt 3.5 version one and this gpt 4 one so we actually specify that we want to use that specific model since it's made especially for these functions so we specify the name here of one of those models that's trained for this we specify our messages object, which is calculate the sum of one, two, and three. And we specify our list of functions, which is just the description of the sum function. All right, and then we have a extra function call argument, which we can pass. And we can either say that in our chat completion, we, we just wanted to answer for the sum function, right? So this would be in the case where prompts would only be related to calculating the sum. Uh, because all its answers are going to be a response as if it were the arguments for the sum function. And if you have a list of multiple different types of functions, like let's say something very different, like we have a sum function, but we also have, which we're going to look at, oh, but we also have something like 
switch on the lights in my house, you know, like some smart home function. Um, and then we could pass uh, auto. And for when we pass auto, it will just pick the most appropriate function, if any, uh, for the prompt that's being prompted. Uh, so after calling the chat completion, we extract the response and we can run our program to see if it correctly responds by saying how we should use the function. All right, so this is the output for our chat completion. And as you can see, it returns the content as null, but it returns this function call where it specifies that it wants to call the sum function given these arguments or given these keyword arguments. And as you can see, one of the keyword arguments is numbers and the numbers formatted in our square brackets. We could then use this with an existing sum function and pass these numbers to it to actually calculate the sum. In this way, we can allow JetGPT to call and connect to different functions which are located in traditional code. Let's quickly look at another example. Here we have a file that says, can you switch on the light with ID3 in my house? And we have a list of functions which describes one single function, which is called switch light on. And this function has a description which says it will switch the light on given a specific ID and they valued stating whether the light should be on or off. The function takes two keyword arguments, the light ID, which is a number, which represents the unique light and the light mode, which is a Boolean, which is true if the light should be switched on and false if the light should be switched off. Both these arguments are required in order to call this function. And then once again, we just perform the chat completion. So let's run it. As you can see, it decided to call the switch light mode function. And as arguments, it gives the light ID with an integer of three or a number three, which is what we asked to be the ID. And the light mode is set to true because we want the light to be switched on, which is in accordance to the description of this light mode argument. Awesome. So this has some insane potential in order to make things such as auto GPT or three of thoughts in order to automate your life with ChatGPT and call different functions that are useful to you. And you can imagine the prompt that we just used is something you could easily ask to your smart home device, Google Home-ish device. Now I recently watched the great video of Sentex going over this function calling API. The video is linked in the description. And he also mentioned that you could use this function calling API in order to force a format for your ChatGPT output. And it doesn't have to be related to the actual arguments of the function. Before, when you wanted ChatGPT to respond with a specific format, you would have to do something like, hey, can you answer this question given this JSON format? And you would give an example question response. And then it might reply using that format that you specified. But sometimes it would also respond with a little text in front of it, like, yes, of course, here is your answer. And then it would pass the JSON, which would require some sort of parsing. And sometimes it would just give wrongly formatted JSON or no JSON at all. So let's take a look at an example of how we can enforce a specific format that is not related to the actual function we're calling, but it does answer our prompt. To demonstrate how we can format our answer, we're going to use the following prompt. Give the hex value of three different colors that go well together. We create our list of functions again, passing some function that takes as argument the format of the result we want because ChatGPT will respond with use this function and here is the argument just like here before and here are the arguments that you want to pass to it. So in our case, our question is give three hex values of three different colors that go well together and the argument to our function that doesn't really have anything to do with the answer to the prompt is an array of items, which are strings, right? Which would be the strings like hashtag FFFFF. And the description of this colors argument is a list of hex string values for colors, where the example would be hashtag FFFF. And this colors argument is required. When we then call the chat completion, we can use this function call parameter in order to specify that we have to be calling the function foo. So in this case, we force the chat model in order to respond with this colors argument. So let's run this code and see what the output is. All right, and as you can see, we see that we once again don't return any content, but the model does return that we want to do a function call of the function foo, 
which we forced here. And the arguments to the function are the three colors that supposedly fit well together. And the cool thing about this is that we could really enforce the format of the answer to our prompt, which was kind of difficult or non-deterministic before. I hope this video was somewhat helpful to you as an introduction to the function calling API. If it was, please leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Have a nice day.